About to get another dollar, baby, out here in Nashville, Tennessee. Roads are still jacked up. Salt trucks ain't came through. Plow trucks ain't came through, and they ain't coming through. They waiting for the freaking temperature to get back above 35 degrees so the sun can melt it. And titty in, baby. Everybody calling out of work around here. But anyways, some of you guys been sending me messages on Facebook Messenger asking me, uh, a lot of y'all owner operators, y'all asking me what can y'all lease y'all truck on to, uh, what customer can you get out there in the oil field to uh, do this crude oil or either do uh, sand. So as far as sand go, I don't recommend sand. I wouldn't tell you to go do any type of sand work, whether it be a hopper bottom, a pneumatic trailer, or double boxes, or one box, half a box, two boxes, three boxes stacked up, flatbed trailer with four boxes. I wouldn't tell you to do anything with sand. Because if you do do it, you're going to learn the hard way when you can't feed your family. Your kid's stomach is growling. Another man is stepping in your place because you ain't making no money. So don't be that driver, okay? But if you must go out there and haul sand because you don't believe what it is that I'm saying, you got a drive out there telling you he making money hand over fist. Tell that driver, send you his last 30 days bank statement. Now, you don't want to see no company settlements. You need to see his last 30 days bank statement. See how much income been coming in through there. Don't matter how much money he spent. You just need to see if he claims that the money is coming in like it's coming in, he can show you his bank statement. Look. Bain's got an app on the phone. All he got to do is log in, hit statement. Only take about five seconds, and he can show you. He can block out all he needs to block out. But uh, you need to see, make sure that income is really coming through like he claims. More than likely, if he hollering sand, it ain't coming through. See, you got to understand when you're talking to a sand hauler how the uh, lingo, the conversation is going to go. See, when a sand hauler tells you he's making money hand over fist, what he's telling you is the day before, he had a good day. He finally got three loads. That's number one. Number two, if a sand hauler tells you they making big money out there, what that means is another guy that used to do sand that ain't even out there he told that person that it's some money out there. But ain't none of them out there doing sand. Got to be careful with the sand haulers. That's why I avoid sand. Won't see me pulling sand because it ain't no money in it no more. I've been in the oil field since 2017. Ask me which direction sand hauling racing went. Do you think from 2017 to 2018? To 2019, it was going up? Or do you think from 2017 to now, straight to the bottom, baby. Straight to the bottom. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Y'all asking about uh, Hamilton. I went and checked this channel. I seen what he doing. He over at Debt Moral Logistics. How much you think Debt Moral Logistics is paying? About 1500 a week. Ask me in 2018 how much Debt Moral Logistics was paying. About 2500 to 3000 to do new Maddox. How much are they paying now? About 1500 50% off, baby. The rates only go down, damn it. That's why it's important not to be waiting around and trucking, hoping things are going to get better because <laughs> it only goes down. And as long as you fuck around and wait, down to the bottom it goes. That's why I tell people, hey, man, uh, Take some of that money and learn a new skill, baby, because this right here is, we going down. Yeah, every day you wait, it's going down. It ain't going up. He ain't going up, baby. It ain't going up. It ain't going up. Now, it's a lot different when you're working directly with the customer. Those rates is totally different then when you leased on to a, a company and you hauling for the company or you're a company driver, those rates go down. A little bit different when you're working directly with the customer because they bid on lanes. It could go up, down, sideways. That's a different situation. You will never know, though. 
Move it along, baby. Move it along. Moving along, baby. I don't recommend the oil field unless you're going to North Dakota or you're going to Utah. That's the only two states I recommend. Any other state I don't know nothing about, don't recommend it unless you're doing some crude oil hauling. Now, I have seen a crude oil hauler on YouTube. He's, he's on YouTube. It's a, a new channel. I just now noticed him. He do crude oil down there at the bottom towards Louisiana. Local driver, home every day, making 100000 He got his YouTube channel up. Like I said, I just discovered him. I try to share one of his videos in my community post. I can't I can't think of his name because he's brand new. Well, at least he's brand new to me. I don't know how long he's been on YouTube, but check my community post. I try to share one of his videos. He making it happen down now. Down there towards that I-10 area. That's all you need to know. Um... And I think he tell what company he worked with too. I think it's um, Energy Transfer or something like that. But the problem is, baby, it's crude oil. Crude oil paying every which way you look. So, <laughs> hey, hey, it's crude oil. It's hazmat, baby. Ain't that what we've been talking about all year? Hazmat. Of course it's paying. Because you ain't got all the people that don't qualify to come holler. Yeah, that's what it's the people that don't qualify. You're like, man, why are you here? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Yeah, he got the rates all the way to the flow for no reason. See, man, you got it, man. That's why, that's why when I, in trucking, man, it's got to be boundaries. We got, everybody can't do the same thing. It need to be boundaries, baby. Five years experience minimum. <laughs> One year crude oil hauling experience. Doubles and triples. Uh, Rocky Mountains. 18 speed transmissions. Yeah. <laughs> Just make it as difficult as possible because when it's so difficult, Man, once you get through all this red tape, you'll get in here. You, man, look, hey, look, if you don't, man, if, look, if I had to do all this, I had to get through all this red tape, then you want me to drive a, a bomb, doubles, doubles and triples through the Rocket Mountains? You think I could do that for free? All right, then. So, yeah, 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 that's how you keep the rates high. That's all I'm saying, but, you know, you know. Somebody want to know, Andrew, is the oil field coming back? <laughs> Must be a sand holler, baby. The oil field ain't never coming back when you're hollering sand. It don't come back, baby. It just stay down. <laughs> don't mind me talking crap about the sand hollers. Look, I got sand holler friends right now. They out there. They say they can feed their family. It ain't a lot of money. It ain't what it used to be. But they can put, you know, about one plate on the table and the family got to kind of eat off their one plate. <laughs> and they got to do what they got to do. That's all I'm saying. It's better than a lot of other options like drive in and refill. Uh, they said it's better than that, you know, because that ain't that ain't really, you know, up there either. But, you know, you know, hey, got to do what you got to do, baby. Got to do what you got to do. Now, what's the next field I'm going to start talking about? Now, we're we going to kind of get away from the oil field. Let's talk about some other type of field, baby. Some of you guys asking me about LNG. Some of y'all want to know about hauling some hydrogen, doing some fuel hauling, things like that. We might have to swing over to a different part of Tango, but the problem is everything that I know to pay 100 k involves a hazmat license. I know it's a lot of y'all out there. You're like, Andrew, we don't do hazmat. We can't qualify. You know, we either we got felonies. We smoke weed. We need something else, Andrew. And the problem is, I ain't got nothing else for you. I don't know what to tell you, to be honest with you. Y'all got to tell me, you know, what pays 100K that don't involve hazmat. I don't know. Ah, shit, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it's stuff out there. You know, a heavy haul and... You know, RGN and all that. Problem is, that's 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 restrictions. Everybody can't just go get an RGN, man. You gotta work your way up. They got they got boundaries to keep you. You know, it's a red tape. You know what I'm talking about? That's how the oil field should have been, a bunch of red tape. But they didn't turn frack sand in the drive in, baby. You know, somebody straight out of CDL school can go out there, hop in a truck, hook up to a hopper bottom, no skills required. Start hauling sand. So when there ain't no skills required, baby, guess what? They don't need to pay so much. Why do you think pneumatic paid more than hopper bottom? Because you couldn't just hop in a truck and just start unloading sand. 
It was a big process to it. Gotta learn how to operate the blower. Gotta learn how to do all them handles and shit in the correct motion and keep your eye on the gauge. There was a lot of skills, man. You had to be trained for that. There ain't no training when it comes to hop bottom, baby. You ain't gotta do nothing. Nothing at all. You look, look, look. You get your training when you get ready to unload. One of them sand coordinators will tell you which button to hit to open the damn bottom. Matter of fact, you stay in the truck. He'll do it for you. <laughs> He'll do it for you. You just stay your ass in the truck. In the automatic truck. It ain't even no skills to drive the truck no more. You just hold just hold the steering wheel, baby. Sorry, that's the only skill required. Hold the steering wheel. And we arguing about the rates. Y'all in y'all in sand hollers of America. Y'all still complaining. Still blaming Mr. Charlie. It's not Mr. Charlie fault, man. Y'all didn't want to own nothing. So Mr. Charlie had to go out and buy all the trailers. Since y'all wasn't buying the trailers, somebody got to buy the trailers. Etson and all them, Chevron and all them got all this work. Ain't nobody got no trailers. So Mr. Charlie, hey, look, y'all don't want to own nothing. All right, well, I'm about all the fucking trailers. And that's what Mr. Charlie did. He bought all, look, look, look. He bought all the hopper bottoms. He bought all the damn chassis to put them boxes on, U.S. silica boxes, hella burden boxes. Mr. Charlie bought every trailer out there. So, and guess what you get to do? You don't need no trailer because you got to go hook up the Mr. Charlie trailer, baby. Yeah, he bought all of, He Guess what? He bought the trailers. They gave him the title to every trailer out there. So, don't you worry, baby. Yeah, and he putting a patent on the boxes so you can't go and make your own box. Here, now on the boo-boo, baby. Yeah, good thing. Mr. Charlie. What I'm talking about, Mr. Charlie. That was a good idea. That was a good idea, baby. They can't see now. You can't go get your own customer in the OV. You can't go get your own customer because it's his trailer. But hell, true. I can go buy my own chassis for forty thousand dollars. The minute you buy a forty thousand dollar chassis for boxes. Understand when you drive it off the lot, you know how cars depreciate when you drive it off the lot. When you drive one of them goddamn chassis off the lot, forty thousand turns straight to zero, baby, because ain't nobody buying that chassis from you. Just stuck with forty thousand, go to zero. It's going you can't sell it at the auction. You can't sell it back to Mister Charles. It's zero dollars. You can't do nothing with it. Ain't nobody gonna buy that shit for you. Don't care if it's free. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Oh, and then don't forget, even if you buy the chassis, Mr. Charlie still own the box. That's a damn shame. Mr. Mr. Still Mr. Charlie boxes. It's a damn shame. It's so sad. I just want to cry. I just want to cry. It's so sad. <laughs> we need to change the subject now. Y'all get in the comment section. Let me know. What part of trucking y'all want me to talk about? We'll go explore that part of trucking. But until the end, baby, hazmat seem to be the way to go in 2024. I'm over here studying for my hazmat test because I got to renew, baby. My five years is over with. I got two months. I got to renew. I ain't not really scheduled my little hazmat fingerprints. But I'm snowed in, so I can't go get on my fingerprints. I already got my brand new Twit card. Got that last month. It is firing 2028. So now I just got to go and do the hazmat, go to DMV, take the test. Then I'll be good for another five years. So that's all to that. But when I go take my test at the DMV, I'm going to take the double and triple test because I, I don't have that endorsement. So I'm going to go and get the endorsement. Might as well, since I got to sit there and take the hazmat test, might as well get two endorsements, you know. Oh, I already got the hazmat endorsement, but go ahead and renew that. And since I'm sitting there at the damn computer table, you know, go ahead and answer 20 more questions for the freaking doubles and triples, but tri doubles and triple endorsement. I have many questions. Either. Don't worry, iPads. Don't worry. We got ChrisCDL.com. It's free. It's free. That's where we get the questions and the answers. We just study and go take the test and pass every time like clockwork. We I ain't never failed no test. It's too easy. It's so sad. It's so easy. I be hearing people, they be like, man, I done failed that test two, three, four, five times. How can you fail the test? You got Chris CDL. And then you figure out they, they reading a book this goddamn thick. That's so sad if you reading a CDL book trying to pass the test. That's so sad. That's so sad. I just want to cry. <laughs>